Everything is about to change in Elementor, and the way we're building websites now is going to be completely different coming soon. This is a bigger change than what we had when we went from sections to containers. This change is going to be class-based styling. Here's an example of what they could do and how much faster we could be building our sites instead of clicking around everywhere in the styling, which gets very, very repetitive. We simply set up a class and connect it to our elements. This is a new version four editor. And I have another video on this, how to get started, how it all works. I'll put a link somewhere up here on the top. Basically, the new editor is going to bring the power of class-based styling. Now, this is different from the other classes that we have in Elementor. This is just an input field where we put in a class and then we got to write CSS to target that class and to add in our styles. This new class system does not require you to write CSS. Now the classes not only allow us to have cleaner code, but it also allows us to build systems. And then we could create organized frameworks. Let me show you an example. Here are two sections and they look pretty bad, but that's because I did not style anything. And in fact, we aren't going to style any one of these elements. Instead, we are going to apply classes that have styles assigned to them. Let's first start up here with our banner. I'm going to go to my top section and I am going to search for section where you can see I have section XXL, section L, section M, section S. Now this right here is part of the framework. These are all different sizes. Think of them as t-shirt sizes. They already are set up for desktop and they are mobile responsive as well. But now let's go ahead and turn this into a row. So our content is going down. Got another class flex row. Let's go ahead and add in a gap. So we have some spacing. Well, here is part of the other framework and that is a gap, large, medium, and small. I'm going to add a medium. Let's go to our title. Now I'm going to go here to the style. Again, we're not touching any styles. Instead, I'm going to search for a header and I'm going to use my header sub. Do the same thing for my title here. I'm going to search header and use a XXL. And then for the text. And you see what we're doing here. We're not styling anything. Instead, we're using a framework of classes that have the styles already in them. Let's go and search for text. Now I got my text here and let's fix up our button. I'm going to select on style in my classes and search for button. I'm going to choose the button large. And now there's still some things not happening with this button. And that's because I want a flexibility. Let's do a little bit more. Let's go ahead and align this to the left. Let's give it a background color. I got my backgrounds already set up here. I'll give it this background blue and then we'll give it the light text color. And not once are we touching the styles. And this allows us to go so much faster because it's already set up. We even got our border radiuses from large, medium to small. Let's go and add something in this background as well. We could do more. I'll go back to my container and let's look for another class for our background. So. I'm going to put in a dark background, but now the text is light. Normally we would have to go through the text one by one, but instead I could search for text light, which is a style I set up. And now all the text changes and maybe this button. Well, now it doesn't have enough contrast. So let's go and change that background. I'm going to undo the last background open my backgrounds again and find one that I created again. Same thing for the text color. So let me remove this and I'm going to search for my text dark. And now we have a good start, but we could take it a step further. Let's go ahead and click on our text because this is too long. Let's go to our style and search for max width. And if you are wondering how I got all these, don't worry. I am about to show you. Okay. So we got a few max widths already set up here. I'll choose a 500. I feel this is a good size. Now the way that I got this is you see it is turned green. That means this is active. And if I go over to my size, we could see that I've given this already a value of 500. So what I did was I created a page called just my class builder. And inside of that, I spent a couple of hours setting up all my classes. So let me open up my class manager. First, I got to publish and save. But then here on the left, you can see all of the classes I created. This is a very 
basic minimalistic framework to get started with. So I got all my sections, my backgrounds, my gaps, border radiuses, and so on. Let's say we want to start creating some for padding. Now, I want some more space between this text and my call to action button. Normally, we would go to the element, over to the style, to the spacing, and then we would just add in some, you know, 20 pixels padding on the bottom. But the problem with this is when you do that, you're now creating IDs. And if you ever wanted to use something like 20 pixel padding on the bottom, well, you just have to keep manually doing it. But instead, what we could do, let's remove that. I am going to go to my classes and create a new one. I'm going to call this one padding bottom 20 create it and as long as it is selected with this green color that means when i go back over here and i give it the padding bottom i'm going to convert it to rim which is going to be 1.25 rim i believe okay i hope it is well now this style is connected to this class it is not connected to this element that's it now let's go ahead and try to apply it somewhere else say i want it also here, I could just go search for my padding and put the padding bottom. And now that style is there, cutting out the redundancy of having to go through, click, 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 and add a lot of messy code. I'm gonna go and also give a max width to this title because it's quite big. Let's say max width 1000. This is a good size. Now let's go over here and I'm going to show you how quick I can make a really clean section with a grid. So I'm going to first start inside of the container, go to my style, search for my section classes. And I'm going to use a section large. Let me put a background and I'm going to have a light background color. And then let's choose row and I'm gonna put flex row. And now I wanna center everything and I created another class just to do that. I'm gonna search for center and choose my flex center. Next up, let's go ahead and give this a style. Again, this is gonna be a subheader. This is going to be, we're gonna make it a large header. So I'm gonna search for my headers, choose large. And then for my text, I'm gonna give it my regular text style. So I'm gonna put in text search for the style which is a medium and again let's give this a max width so it's easier to read so i'm going to search for max select 500 but now we need to center align it let's go ahead and again put in center and then we have text align center one more thing let's go ahead and build our grid i got a card class i'm going to go to my card select on card and i have large medium and small already built out select it bam i got a card already set up let's go to each one of the elements oh by the way i do have a hover effect on it as well let me go back and show you you can see the style here i click on the three dots and i could choose hover and now i actually got a hover style where i could choose my hover background i could also control the typography within that container which is super cool. Okay, let's go to each one of these elements. I am gonna to go to my style, and I'm gonna search for icon, and again, I did the same thing, large, medium, and small. I am gonna put in a medium right now, this is good. For the title, I am gonna select on header, and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a medium header. Let's go to my text. And same thing, search text, text medium, and then our button. And I'm gonna put a button small. For this one right now though, I am going to just apply a few different classes because I just wanna show you how this all could work. Let me choose a background. I am gonna have a dark background. I'll put the dark blue, and then I'll put the text light, and then I'll put the border radius and I'll put in a medium. And now all I gotta do is go over to my card. Let's duplicate it a few times. And then let's go to my container, my container wrap and all the cards. I am now going to add a gap and I'll put in a gap medium. Now we need to fix the spacing. I am gonna go to my outer container. Let's again also put in a gap and I'll put in, let me see, a gap medium. Yes, that'll be good. And then right here, we'll put in that picks that padding bottom so that padding bottom we just created will be perfect right there and now we have this section created 
just like that without having to use any IDs or having to click around manually adding all of our styles. This is something that we will work on when creating our frameworks. And the goal for the framework is to create it, set it up once and use it as a blueprint where all you have to do is go through your settings and make minor adjustments to the classes. This is going to change everything. Now, I'm going to be working on a pretty detailed framework and a new blueprint that's going to include a very fast-paced building system. And I'm going to share it with everybody that is signed up to our Lightbox newsletter. So if you do want to get my blueprint and my framework that I'm going to be releasing really soon, make sure to sign up to our newsletter. I'll leave links to it all inside the description. I'll put one inside of the comments. Uh, plus, we got a lot of good content coming out every single week. And if you do have any questions and would like to see more, let me know inside of the comments, drop them inside there. And if you would like to see how I built more in detail of these kind of frameworks, I'd be happy to share more detailed videos, but I want to hear from you. So yeah, leave it in the comments. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.